the idea of thinking routines came about from a, a study which I did. I spent a year in six classrooms in which teachers were very adept at getting their students to think, nurturing their habits of mind, their thinking dispositions with that. And I wanted to study and wanted to see what teachers were doing um, that actually encouraged that. And that, um, from that study, the ideas of kind of developing a culture of thinking was very important from that. But one of the things that I noticed in that context was these teachers who were very adept at getting students to think never once taught a thinking skills lesson. Instead, what they did, and what I noticed they did, was they had routines and structures that helped to scaffold and support students' thinking. So just as we have routines for kind of the housekeeping chores in a classroom, so we have routines about how we're going to have a discussion in the classroom, routines about how the learning's going to unfold, we need to have routines that help to scaffold and support the thinking so that students know what that's all about. And I saw that these teachers were doing that. They were patterns that recurred over and over again so that students in those classrooms knew what it meant to, to think like a historian, knew what it meant to think as they were reading and interpreting text you had to think in mathematics or in science. Um, and so that idea of thinking routines, we took that and thought about, well, what are some other structures we can develop that teachers can then use and make patterns in their own classrooms? Thinking routines um, have a few qualities, and one of those is that they have very few steps. That makes them very easy to use, very easy to remember um, for both the teacher and the student. So they become possible to kind of slip into conversation, to easily structure a task, to carry around um, in one's head. So most routines only have um, two, three, you know, sometimes f um, four steps at, at the most within that. So a very few number of steps within that. Another quality of the routines is they are always goal-oriented. So there's an outcome which we're looking for from the routine, and that outcome is the thinking, the processing of ideas, and the work with the content. So every routine, so what is the goal about this? So for example, a routine like headlines, which is all about capturing the heart and kind of um, considering what, what is the core idea or the core issue here, and summing that up in a single headline. Well. So its goal is to do that summary. So whenever we want to achieve that goal, then it's a good match kind of within that. And then a final quality of routines, which is really important, which is where they get a lot of their power, is they're what we call both public and private practices. So they're public practices in the sense that we can do them in the classroom, we can do them with students, we can work as a whole group, um, and we benefit from that discussion. But they're also tools that an individual can use in their own learning. And again, that's where a lot of the power comes from is we aren't just doing an activity in class which makes this content more palatable or more enjoyable, but we're actually giving the students tools for their own learning that they can carry forward. So one advice I would have for, for teachers is to think about, well, are there routines you're already using and can you make those routines and those practices much more explicit for your students? and turn those into tools. The other advice I would give is, is to look at the routines and think about, again, how does a routine match on to content? The first question to always ask is, what kinds of thinking do I want students to be doing with this content? What's the kind of thinking? Do I need them to be making connections? Do I need them to be building explanations? Do I need them be, to be considering different perspectives? And then based on the kinds of thinking you want with that content, then you choose a routine which helps students to do that kind of thinking. And what we're really trying to do is trying to enculturate ways of thinking. And that should be one of the missions of a quality education, is that students should learn how to think within that. And in order to do that, it's not about kind of teaching a skill, but it's really about developing a culture in which thinking is always required, in which thinking is always a part of what's going on. And in that way, then students are using thinking in order to learn, but they're also learning to think as a result of that. <music>